side 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 congruence triangle rigidity and included angles this is a lesson 4.5a so we've got seven previous lessons for this chapter that are in the geometry playlist in the description now we have proved triangles congruent by showing all three pairs of corresponding angles and all three pairs of corresponding sides were congruent we did that in our last video the property of triangle rigidity gives us a shortcut for proving two triangles congruent it states that if the side lengths of a triangle are given, the triangle can have only one shape. So we can try doing this. Take some sticks or some straws or popsicle sticks or whatever and cut three pairs of identical lengths. So that means you're going to have a pair that are maybe two inches long, a pair that are maybe three inches long, and maybe a pair that are four inches long, whatever measure you decide. And then take one of each of the measures and make a triangle and then take one, the other that are remaining and try to make a triangle to make it different than the first one, what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to. If we've got three different pairs of identical lengths, we're going to make the same triangle. So we only need to know that two triangles have three pairs of congruent corresponding sides to prove the two triangles are congruent. We don't have to also have the corresponding angles. We can just do the sides. And this can be shown as this following postulate. So this is side, 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 which is shortened as SSS congruence. We have a postulate, a hypothesis, and a conclusion. The postulate says if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So if you look at this, we've got AB is a four, and DH is a four, BC is a six, and DE is a 6, and AC is a 7, and FE is a 7. Our conclusion is that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle FDE. Now see how I put FDE instead of DEF? This is why. I didn't write DEF for the congruent triangle. In fact, we should have a triangle here, shouldn't we? I didn't put DEF because angle A is corresponding to angle F. Angle B is corresponding to angle D. And C is co corresponding to E. So our ABC is congruent to FDE. See that? We have to make sure that they're in the order of the corresponding angle. Using SSS to prove triangle congruence and why triangle PQR is congruent to triangle PSR. First thing we should do is take a good look at this diagram. We can see there's a triangle here and a triangle here, and it kind of looks like a reflection across this PR, doesn't it? We can see this is congruent to this. We can see this is congruent to this. So we can write a paragraph proof. It is given that segment PQ is congruent to P, segment PS. This is congruent to this. It's given in the diagram with the congruent marks. And that QR is congruent to SR. We see the congruent marks. And by the reflexive property of congruence, PR is congruent to PR. What it means is the PR that's used in this triangle is congruent to the PR that's used in this triangle because of the reflexive property. Therefore, triangle PQR is congruent to triangle PSR by SSS. If you're confused about the paragraph proof, we learned about that in 2.7b, and you can go back then back there and take a look at that if you need to. An included angle is an angle formed by two adjacent sides of a polygon. So remember, adjacent means next to. So what it's saying is an included angle is an angle formed by two sides that are next to each other of a polygon. An angle B right here is the included angle between sides AB and BC. AB and BC are adjacent to each other. And angle B is the included angle that's between them. Okay, so that's what an included angle is. Got a little tiny two-column proof here. We can use SSS to explain why triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. So we're saying that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. And look, they're sharing line AC. So our statement from one is that segment AB is congruent to segment CD. We see the congruent marks here and here. And that 
BC is congruent to AD or DA. See? Congruent marks. So that's given in the diagram. So the given isn't always in words here. It could be given in the diagram. Number two says AC is congruent to CA. It's saying this AC line that's used for this triangle is congruent to this same segment used for this one. And that's the reflexive property of congruence. Brings us to number three, that ABC is congruent to CDA because of SSS. And it's written in this order because A is corresponding to C, B is corresponding to D, and C is corresponding to A. And that's why this one is written in that order. Okay? Got one last little one. We're going to use SSS to explain why triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DBC. So this one is congruent to this one. And look, it's sharing a line again, so we know it's going to happen, right? We're going to use reflexive property. So our statement is that AC, segment AC, is congruent to DC. So we've got two marks here and two marks here. We know those are congruent. We also know that AB is congruent to DB. There's congruent marks here. That's given in the, the diagram. Number two says segment BC is congruent to BC. The BC that's used in this triangle is congruent to the BC that's used in this triangle. That's the reflexive property of congruence. Which brings us to three that says triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DBC because of side, 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 SSS. All right? So our next lesson, we're going to talk about side angle side. That's SAS congruence. And we're going to construct triangles using SAS, side angle side. That's going to be 4.5B. So we're going to continue on with lesson 4.5 in the next video. All right? So I hope this made sense to you, and hit the like button if it was helpful, and I'll see you next time. Bye!